VSA for the masses. Coming up next on HP Tech Talk. Hi, welcome to this episode of HP Tech Talks. I'm Andy McCaskey from SDR News, and this series is where we talk with folks from HP about how HP is defining a new style of IT. Uh, whether the topic is uh, servers or networking or cloud or storage. And in fact, joining us here today to uh, continue uh, discussion on the storage uh, topic is Kate Davis uh, calling, I think from Colorado, is that right? Yes, I am calling for Colorado today, and we're having a, a nice snowfall as well. Oh, wow. Well, Kate, first uh, first things first, a little congratulations uh, in order. I understand there's a promotion uh, that you just recently received. Yeah, thanks. I've been working on the store virtual product line for the last few years, and over this past year, really ramping our story around software-defined storage. And so recently, I was promoted to marketing manager for software-defined storage. Well, in our earlier conversation, we talked about all sorts of, uh, uh, of options and some of the background behind software-defined storage. But today we wanted to try and uh, focus in on the VSA product, uh, specifically because there have been a couple of, of recent uh, announcements. So maybe you could fill us in. Yeah, so I'll first tell you about the announcement we had back in, in August around the VMworld timeframe. And that's when we introduced some of the new capabilities that we came out with in our left-hand OS 11.0 release. And that is both for our VSA products and for the store virtual hardware appliances. And one of the big things that we talked about there was our adaptive optimization, which comes um, to affect our, our tiering capabilities. And for several years, we've had more of a, a dynamic optimization as far as tiering goes. Um, we've been calling it pure motion, where you can move a volume across different types of clusters. Maybe you have a SaaS performance cluster and one that's midline SaaS for capacity, and you can move your, your volumes around as, as you see fit. And now we have added to that the capability of doing sub-volume auto-tiering with our adaptive optimization feature. And so now you can build clusters that have the two different types of, of uh, disks right in, inside the platform and it automatically moves the, uh, the data around. So that allows you to move uh, whether you want to have it in really, really fast SSD storage or on uh, rotating media then, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. You can, with VSA, you're actually really flexible about the, the types of tiers that you create. So SSD and SAS is um, you know, your primary use. You could do a SAS and midline SAS for just a, a small bit of performance and then more of a capacity play. Or you could do an IO accelerator card if you wanted just a small amount of, of flash storage right inside your box. Well, a lot of our discussions uh, surrounding VSA uh, are the fact that it can apply from, from small or rapidly growing uh, businesses up to the very largest enterprises. Uh, one of the notes that I had uh, prior to the show here that, that really kind of was surprising to me, uh, the crossover point apparently was in 2009 where there were more virtual machines than there were physical machines. But uh, it appears that uh, uh, medium -sized, small and medium-sized businesses are actually virtualizing at a much faster rate uh, than our enterprises. Is this something that surprises you? No, it, it, it doesn't surprise me. As virtualization has become ma more mainstream, as you're getting uh, smaller businesses, usually you know maybe younger um, type of admins that are really getting into new technologies, they're ramping faster with virtualization. Also, when companies are starting up, they're going right into what's going to help their business be more flexible and grow over time, and that's what virtualized servers do is they they give them that freedom to have a, uh, a server and load up um, a large number of, of virtual machines and right now we're seeing that that trend change everybody has become comfortable with virtualized servers and now they're moving on to storage 
and looking at how they can have that same efficiency and flexibility with their, their storage. Well, I think that uh, some folks might be concerned about the learning curve that would be involved in administering storage. Uh, how is HP addressing that uh, uh, concern? So manageability is a big concern. Uh, traditionally, you have your server infrastructure and you have your completely separate storage infrastructure. And as you get into larger companies, those are two separate teams that have to agree and, and work together. Um, as you have a, a smaller office that already has a, a server platform in place and they become comfortable with the hypervisor and the management structure, where we bring in our store virtual VSA is it allows you to put that storage capability right on that platform that you're comfortable with and have all the same management tools because all you're doing is adding another VM into your environment. Well, that uh, relates back to uh, your other announcement uh, just uh, a couple of days ago then. Yeah, we're very excited about a recent announcement that we went out uh, last Tuesday with. Um, it's all about bringing software-defined storage to our customers in a way that's going to be very easy for them to, um, to try out, maybe if they haven't, or to implement um, into their infrastructure. And so what we announced is that uh, there are 10 models of HP ProLiant servers that are now el eligible to have Store Virtual VSA uh, licenses and, and so we have given our customers a free one terabyte license of store virtual VSA. So this would be uh, certainly of, uh, of interest in smaller organizations, but what about a very large enterprise that might have uh, uh, hundreds of uh, remote or branch offices? Uh, how, how does it help them? So it's kind of interesting when you talk about SMBs and you talk about more enterprise remote offices, because in the end, they're, they're very similar. They usually have just a few servers, um, physical or virtualized. And in the end, it's, it's very similar. They have limited IT administration. They have the same uh, growth needs, same efficiency needs. And so it, it's, it's, it's interesting to, um, to, to look at the, the differences in the businesses and then see the commonalities there. I, I thought it was interesting how you charitably talked about uh, limited resources. I would say probably no dedicated IT people would be uh, more common. That, that is true in the enterprise robos. Usually, you know, if you're thinking about large retail operations, you're not gonna have an IT guy sitting on site in all those different cities. And so the great thing about the store virtual product line is we have a common management system. So you open up the console, it sees everything that's in your infrastructure, no matter where it's at. And so I know there are admins um, that are currently using that product today. Some of their sites may be 600 miles away and they can uh, administer it as if they were there. What role do your channel partners play in, in the rollout of VSA? Oh, they play a large part. Uh, traditionally, Store Virtual has been uh, a huge channel play. And so it's a great product for, for channel partners to be able to um, kind of grow with their, their customers as we grow as this, it's a scale out platform. So it allows the customer and the partner to really work together. And also the partner can add additional services to adapt to whatever that customer needs. Okay, so the, the license that is uh, available with this, um, with this program that you just announced, is that uh, uh, limited in some way? Is that time limited or, or the amount of storage that it can manage? Uh, how, how, is, uh, how is that set up? Yeah, so the license that we're giving away free is, is one terabyte. Uh, we do have a couple of limitations on it. You can grow only to a three node cluster. So basically you can have three servers each running the one terabyte license and it uh, pools to grow to a three terabyte cluster. So, and that is available to anything that's in your infrastructure. So it could be just those three servers that you have, or it can serve out to any other servers that you have on your infrastructure. 
Okay, so it's beyond a a, a demo or or a um, it's very useful is what it, is what I would would say, <laughs> but at a small scale. Yes, yeah, it's very useful. So. One of the other things that we announced back in August was additional capacity sizes for the VSA. So the past, we've been shipping VSA for six years now. So for the first five, uh, we only offered a 10 terabyte license. And so now we have uh, four terabyte, 10 terabyte and 50 terabyte licenses that are, that are for sale, plus this, this one uh, terabyte that's free. And all of the software, no matter what the capacity size is, it's all the exact same software. Um, so you can feel comfortable with the one terabyte version that it is the same software you're going to put into production if you had bought a 10 terabyte license. Excellent. So, so where, where can folks go for, uh, for more information on this, uh, on this offer? So we have a, a page out for the program. It's hp.com slash go slash free VSA. Or if you want to just go straight to the VSA product page, that's at hp.com slash go slash VSA. Okay. Well, Kate, thanks very much for joining us and uh, helping us to understand a little bit more about software-defined storage. And uh, thanks to you folks for joining us here as well. We'll see you next time on HP Tech Talk.